Hi there, it's Di from Superlucky and this is my beginner's guide to using the Instagram app. Now you can use Instagram online on the website, instagram.com, but you won't be able to use all its features. You can't upload content and you can't access your messages. So it's best if you get it downloaded to your mobile phone. Now Instagram was designed as a simple photo sharing app, but these days you can share videos, live videos, stories, and it's an app that a lot of brands are moving to to do most of their social media on, so it is worth getting to grips with. Now I've recorded this video on my iPhone, so your Instagram app might look slightly different to mine. If you have got any questions or you're not sure about anything, leave me a comment below. I will be doing a follow-up video showing you how to enter competitions on Instagram, and that will be coming soon. So the first thing we need to do is download the Instagram app to our mobile device. It works better on a phone, so if you can, download it to your smartphone. Open it up and you have a choice of how to log in. So you can connect with your Facebook account and log in using Facebook, or you can sign up using your mobile phone number or an email address. I'm going to use one of my spare email addresses just to sign up for an account to show you what to do. So tap next. And here you can put in the name that you want to display on your Instagram profile page. So not your username, the name you want to see on your profile. And add in a password. As you can see, Instagram has assigned me a username based on my email address. So it's given me the name diana.coke. I'm going to change that to something different. Now, ideally, you'd like to use the same username that you might use on Twitter. It makes things a bit more convenient if you are using the same username. But really, you can have anything. And unlike Twitter, you can actually put full stops in there as well. So choose your username. I've just put a couple of random words here together for my test account. Uh, banana squishy. Tap on next. Confirm that you're over 18. Now here you can choose to connect to your Facebook friends so you can find people to follow. But you can always skip all these and come back to do this later. Adding a profile photo is quite important. So let's add a photo. Um, let's choose from library. I've got a recent photo here of me and my mum that I'm just going to zoom in on and use for now. I don't want to share this as a new post, so I'm just going to switch that off. Okay, and then I'm going to save the information so I don't have to log in again on my phone. Now Instagram doesn't really know much about me, but it's going to suggest some accounts that I can follow. These are obviously very popular accounts that Instagram thinks I might like. So I'm scrolling down. I Yes, I probably would like to follow Alton Towers because I bet they do some competitions. Um, Emirates Airlines as well. These are obviously brands and influencers. The blue ticks here, of course, mean that they are verified accounts. It's the same system as what you might see on Twitter and on Facebook. So when you're following a few people, you will get some posts on your feed. Tap on done to finish. Cancel that for now. I don't want notifications just yet. You can always add all these on later. To get back to your Instagram profile, tap on the person icon at the bottom. Now I'm going to show you how to edit your profile to add in a short bio, which is what appears at the top of your profile, a bit like what you put onto Twitter. So tap on bio and then just say whatever you want to in here. It can be up to 150 characters, including emojis, uh, whatever you want to use. So I've now got a little bio on my profile page. On your profile page, you'll also see the usual cog icon to change your settings. Now, something that you will see on Instagram is private accounts. That's like private accounts on Twitter. So if you have a private account, it means that you have to approve people who want to follow you. So people request to see your photographs and your content and you approve them. This is no good really if you want to be entering most competitions. You'll happily be able to enter like and comment and follow competitions with a private account. But if you're asked to share photographs with hashtags, for example, then that's difficult because the promoter would need to be following your account. So I don't recommend that you switch that on if you're going to be doing a lot of competitions. So that's how you set up your Instagram account. I'm now going to go back to my regular account at Super Lucky Die to show you everything else. To do that, I'm going to tap on the cog, swipe down to the bottom, log out of that account, 
and then log back in as SuperLucky Die. First of all, I'm going to show you how the profile page is set up. So tap on your photograph to go to your profile page. At the top here, you can see the details of how many people you're following, how many people are following you, how many posts you've done. You can see there's my little bio there. I've also got a web link at the top of the screen there. And most companies, brands, bloggers, influencers will have a website link there as well. So as I scroll down here, you can see the content that I've shared on Instagram. So it's, it's photographs and videos. Uh, there's different ways you can view this. This is the default setting with the grid. If you tap there, it shows you the photos big with the captions underneath as you scroll through. Tap on that one there. That shows you photographs that other people have tagged you in. So people can tag you in a photograph just as they would on Facebook and they appear on your profile there under the tag. This one here, similar to Twitter bookmarks, it's posts that you can save. So you're the only person who can see these. If you save a post, the person whose post it is doesn't know about it. So as well as having saved posts here, you can curate collections. So for example here, I've got a collection of posts, which are competitions I want to look at later. Tap that back arrow to get back. Now if you do create an Instagram story, you will see a circle around your profile picture and to view your story, you simply tap on the profile picture and that is your Instagram story. If I tap on highlight there in my story, I can add that story to the top of my profile and it will stay there. So you can see at the top of my profile now, I've got a highlighted story. And that's how your profile page will look. Now let's check out how the home feed looks. Tap on the house at the bottom to go to your home feed. Instagram is one of those apps that are always adding new features. So it might well be that it's changed again by the time you watch this. But at the moment, what we've got at the top is we've got a new icon and this is IGTV, Instagram TV. This is something brand new to Instagram. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Bento Show. So when you tap on that, you will start to see different videos from people that you follow and also sponsored videos. So these are all vertical videos. You can tap to watch and then close them down at the top. So that's IGTV, Instagram TV. It's vertical videos. It's a bit of a YouTube rival, but in portrait format. Here at the top here, you've got Instagram stories from people that you follow. Now a story is put together from various elements. It can be photos, videos, live videos, just type, graphics, all sorts of fun stuff. And people create that and it lasts 24 hours on your profile. So it's really so little snippets really from somebody's life. So if we tap on Honest Mum here, so she's got a bit of a video. You can tap through, so you put text on, emojis, hashtags. Basically, it's just a little run through about what she's been doing today. And stories last 24 hours, unless you really like it, in which case you can pop it as a highlight on your profile, which you saw me do earlier. So that's stories at the top of your home feed. Underneath is your regular feed. So these are just uh, regular photo and video posts. You'll also see sponsored posts from accounts that you don't follow. So this one here, you can see it says sponsored at the top. So that's an advert and it's a competition. Quite often, if you do see a sponsored post in your feed, it's usually got a link to an external website. So you can tap there, learn more and enter that competition. Close it down there to go back to Instagram. So that's how your feed works. Instagram doesn't show you things in chronological order, unfortunately. It puts posts at the top that it thinks you're gonna be most interested in. On Twitter, you can change your settings to see the posts in most recent order, but you can't do that on Instagram. So on your feed, you'll see photos, you'll see videos like this one, which is actually a boomerang file, which is um, still photos put together as a little video. I'll show you that later. Um, you'll also see posts like this where you can actually see and buy the products. If there's a little shopping bag in the corner, you can choose to buy products from brands. As you scroll down your feed, you might see the little person icon appear in the corner. 
You can tap on that to see which other Instagram accounts are tagged in the photograph. An Instagram post doesn't need to be a single photograph either. You can see underneath this post here, there's four little gray dots, which means that there's four photographs on this post. So just swipe through to see all the photographs. Something else you might see on your feed is a repost or a regram. Now there's an app you can use to do this, which actually puts a little tag at the, in the corner of your photograph to show who originally posted that photograph. You can see Mango Bikes here. Roomkeeper has actually posted a photo and probably tagged Mango Bikes in it. They like it so much, they've actually reposted it on their own main account. It's a bit like a Twitter retweet. It's harder to do than that, and I will tell you how to do it later on. So you might see reposts as well on this feed. So let's look at how we can interact with content on our home feed. I've got a post here from Visit Brighton, which is actually a little video. People with different ideas. Fat Boy Slim talking about Brighton. So I want to like this. It's simple. Tap on the heart. Or you can double tap to like it as well. That's a quick way of doing it. If you want to get involved and comment, tap on the speech bubble. Type in your comment and post. Tap to go back to the original post to see your comment at the bottom there. If you like this post and want to message it to someone, tap on the little paper plane arrow and you can search for a friend in here to send it to. If you want to save the post, tap the little bookmark icon, which as a reminder, you can see here on your profile page. There it is at the top. Back to the home feed. Now if you are interacting and you want to like somebody else's comment, just look for the little heart on the right and then you can like their comment as well or reply to it underneath, a bit like you do on Facebook. Something else we can see here on this post are hashtags. Now Instagram loves hashtags. Hashtags of course are a way of tracking things on a certain theme. So they're used on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. On Instagram hashtags are really important. That's how people get new followers to their accounts because it's all about the visuals. It's about the photos and the videos. So you tag it with the sort of things that people will be looking for. So let's look at a good example here. Let's try Love Brighton hashtag. So when you tag on that, you'll see all the content that's been hashtagged Love Brighton. You'll also see related hashtags that you can scroll through there, Brighton Life, um, Visit Brighton, things like that. If you like the hashtag, you can follow it. That means that new posts, popular posts I should say, on that hashtag will appear on your home feed amongst the regular photos from the accounts that you follow. So if you want to follow it, just tap there. Tap to unfollow again. When you do tap on a hashtag, you'll be able to see the most popular results at the top or the most recent results. And then you can just scroll through, see if there's anything that you like. For example, if you like Brighton Graffiti, you can tap on that. That might be somebody that you want to start following. Anytime you want to go back to the top of your home feed, just tap on home or tap on Instagram at the top. So what else have we got on your home page? So tap on the magnifier and you'll see the search and discover page on Instagram, which is fairly new. This is content that Instagram has curated for you based on your likes, the sort of things you've been liking, commenting on and watching. So across the top, there's different theme groups. Um, so you can, you can tap on any of these, music for example, and it will show you hashtags that you might like. You can swipe through those, uh, photos and videos that are things you might be interested in. Swipe to go back to For You for the main page. That's a selection of all sorts of things that Instagram thinks you'll like. There's, you can see obviously quite a lot of football related things in here because I was liking a lot of England posts and World Cup posts. Um, so it's sort of guessing really the sort of things that you'll like. That's probably a picture of Brighton because I've just liked that Brighton post. So Instagram's trying to be clever, just showing you what it thinks you want to see. And this is a great way of finding new accounts to follow. If there are certain things you're interested in, you can spend hours browsing on that page. Of course, you can be more, more direct as well. If you want to find certain accounts to follow, um, so for example, maybe I want to follow Harry Maguire. So you can search for their real name or their username 
here. And of course, it's also bringing up Harry Maguire hashtag because lots of people have been hashtagging when they posted about him. So I want to follow his account, so I would tap there and follow. Now, when you do follow an account as well, you're going to get loads more suggestions, similar accounts that you can follow. So clearly all football related here. But if there is something that you're really into, this is a really quick way of finding lots of other accounts to follow. So you can go back to the search page simply by tapping the arrow. And then there's the tabs across the top as well. So you can actually, I mean, that's top results, but you could go directly to people. You can get a hashtag and places as well not so relevant for a person. But if, for example, I wanted to see photographs that were taken at the i360 in Brighton, I could search for that under places. And then these are photographs that people have tagged at the i360 tower. So if you're going somewhere on holiday and you want to check it out, search for it on Instagram and you'll find loads of photographs to see what it's like. Back on the homepage menu across the bottom again, you've got the heart. Now that is activity. So, so this shows all your activity. So people that are following you, people that have liked or commented on your posts, people that have mentioned you, that have tagged your name in other posts. And this is something you need to check regularly because it's not infinite. So this is the default tab, which is your activity. If you tap following at the top, you will see activity from the accounts that you follow. So you can see posts that other people are liking. You can see comments that people are leaving on other posts and then you can tap to see what they're looking at and then like it if that's something you like too. So this is a nice way to find new content and new accounts to follow. If the people that you're following start following other accounts, perhaps they're running competitions or something like that, you can see what they're up to here and go in and investigate what they're liking. Now let's take a look at messages or Instagram direct as it's called. Tap on the little paper plane arrow, top right there to go to your message inbox. Now it's not only straightforward messages in here. Um, if you've mentioned someone in your story, it will appear here. Or if someone's replied to your own Instagram story, it will also appear here. Not only that, you can actually do video chats from within messages. So for example, if I um, search for a, a friend here, Nikki, and I can either send her a regular message here, send a photograph or something from my um, camera roll, or I can even tap to video chat with Nikki directly from in my inbox there as well. Also in Instagram Direct, you can set up a group chat via messages. So if I, I've got a few friends here and I'm gonna add them to a group so we can share competitions. So I want to add Susanna, Lindsay, and Michelle. To my group chat. Tap next and you can name your group chat. So I'm going to call it Instagram comps and change the name. To send a message to the people in that group, simply tap send. Here's a comp I'd like to share in my new group. Tap the message arrow underneath and then just search for the name of your group. Once you start adding to it, it will come up near the top. Instagram comps and send. Just to check that's there, go back to the home page, Instagram direct, and there you go. There's your competition shared in your message group. So let's actually upload some content to our Instagram. To do that, tap on the plus button at the bottom. You can take photographs and videos directly in Instagram. What I like to do though is just tap on library here and then I've just got the content from my camera roll to work with. So I'm going to use this photograph here which I took last night and then tap next. Now here's where you can edit and apply filters to your photos. So if I tap on edit at the bottom you can see here quite a simple one is adjust and just at the top there that's how you rotate your picture if it's not quite right. You can also zoom in and out with your fingers there if you want to get closer in. And down here, you can tap to change the perspective slightly too. So I'm gonna just stick with that crop and tap on done. Now, if you swipe across here, there's loads of different settings that you can do. You can adjust uh, the brightness, the contrast of your picture. 
But what the easiest thing to do is actually go to filters, which is where Instagram has already done loads of different settings for you. Swipe through here and you can apply different filters to your photograph. If you want to see the effect it has, tap on the screen, release your finger and that shows you the original and what it's like with the effect on. So go through all these effects here. If you scroll right to the end, you can manage and there's loads more that you can add on. So you can tick and untick filters that you like to make your own custom effect menu there. So I think I want to go for one that looks maybe a bit vintage. So perhaps Valencia. So I'm going to go with that. What I also want to do is add a vignette. So if I tap on edit and go to vignette here, this adds some quite nice dark corners to your image. You can probably see more up at this corner here that can add a good effect as well. So when you're happy with your picture, tap next and you can add a caption to it. Now you don't need to add a caption on Instagram, but it's nice to add a caption. So your caption can just be a little bit of text or you can add in hashtags on the theme of what your photo is all about. So, so add in your caption. Unfortunately, um, my friend isn't on Instagram, so I can't tag her in. If she was on Instagram, I would have tagged her in this caption. I'll show you how to do that later. So add your caption. And then if you want to, you can add in some hashtags underneath. So I'm just going to add in smash hits as a hashtag. So there's your caption and a hashtag. You can tag people in this. Uh, I'm going to do this just to show you how you would do it. So I can tap here. Who's that? Duran Duran. So let's look for Duran Duran on Instagram. I'm sure they must be here. There they are. Tap to tag. Perfect. Add location. I don't want to add a location to this. It's just a book. It's not really important where I took the photograph. And if you want, you can actually share to your connected account. So I don't want to do that at the moment. If you did want to, you would just switch that on and then authorize Instagram to connect to your account. When you're happy, just tap share. And there it appears on your feed and also at the top of your profile here. So when you've made a post on Instagram, you can edit. Just simply tap on it, look for the dots at the top, edit, and you can change whatever you want to here. You can add things in or delete things. You can also delete the picture completely there if you want to by going to that little menu at the top. And that's how you share a simple photo on Instagram. If you've got a photo that's not square on Instagram, you'll see the little arrows in the bottom left hand corner, tap those, and it will take it back to its original proportions. This will look fine on people's feed, but keep in mind that on a profile, all your photos are cropped to the square format. So it is best to try and stick to a square if you can. So to share a video, it's the same process. Tap on the plus sign and navigate to the video that you want to upload. Your video can be up to 60 seconds long, so you might need to trim it. Go to next and you can add filters again to your videos. If you do want to trim it, tap on the clip and then you can move the ends in to make it long, shorter or longer. You can also add a cover. So this is what will show on your profile. So you can choose a still for your video profile. Tap next and as usual, just add your caption. You can add a location here. So this one was actually taken at St Mary's Parish Church and then you can share it to your profile. Something else you can do is share a boomerang, which is essentially a short video, which is made from a clip of photographs put together. And what you can do is you can record all your photographs and they will be put together as a video. So just to show you an example of a boomerang that I've done, this one here, crossbar challenge. So if you time it right, it loops perfectly. So there's certain occasions where a boomerang will work really well. If you've got something going from left to right or something like, like you can see here sporting or someone jumping up and down, a boomerang can work really well, but you might need to do a bit of practice until you get it right. So that's how that would look on my feed. 
The last thing I'm going to show you is Instagram stories. Now they can actually be quite complicated. There are so many different things you can do with your stories. But I'm going to show you just something simple, how to create a very simple basic story. And to get started you either tap the camera icon, top left here, or you can just swipe from your main feed. So uh, this is actually set on camera at the moment, so if I spin it to selfie cam, here I am. So you can take a photograph from here or you can go to your gallery and use a photograph you've recently taken so I'm going to put this one in here and then when you've got your photograph you can add text and all sorts so, so you can add stickers so we'll start with stickers so you can add the location of where you took this you can mention a friend or a user on Instagram a company for example that makes them you can add a hashtag so let's see games night let's call it games night um, there's your hashtag there, so you can stick that anywhere. Use your fingers to move it around, make it bigger, smaller, wherever you want it. On there, and that's going to be a tappable hashtag. So if I tap on that, I will see other content about Games Night. So that's stickers, of course, here as well. You're going to have loads of text, um, little um, emojis. You can also get GIFs as well there. Hang on, where's the GIFs gone? There we go, GIFs. So the GIFs are the moving. Um, stickers so let's look for I want to find maybe a dice so you can find lots of things here so there you go there's a little gift that you can add um, you can also just draw and paint on it so you've got all your different colors here if you tap and hold any color you want there so for example I can draw a heart if you don't like it tap on do you've got all your different pens and things there text as well you can just write love these games and then you can change the type of text that it is so here typewriter strong classic put a background on your text change the color of the background there and move it of course move that way you want there we go maybe put that through the middle there And then when you're happy with that part of your story, you can tap add. So I'm going to add that to my story. So your story only really needs to have one thing in it. If I tap to see now, that's my Instagram story at the moment. But I'm going to add some other parts to it. Every section you add to your Instagram story will be live on your story for 24 hours. That is all. And then it will disappear. So as you add more things to your story, things will start disappearing off the beginning if they're more than 24 hours old. So to add more to my story again, I'm gonna swipe left and I've got a video that I took here as well. So if you're adding a video, you can add effects by swiping there. You can't really see them that clearly, but it's changing the effect on the video. Um, on the video, I could add, for example, questions. Um, what's your favorite game? And then if anybody sees that, they can actually type in the box and reply to me and I can add their replies to my story. So I'm asking, what's your favorite board game? And then if anyone sees that in my story and wants to reply, I can then add their reply to my story if I want to. So something really fun you can do on Instagram stories is to use the face filters and the face effects. To do that, tap on the face and simply swipe across the bottom and just tap on one to try it out. Now, if you like this, you can take a photo by pressing the button or you can film a short video of yourself with this filter to add to your story. A short video of yourself with this filter to add to your story. And then just tap to add it to your story. Hands-free is really useful if you want to record without holding your finger down on the bottom, which you have to do if you're doing a video. So for this one, you just tap and it will record without you keeping your finger on the bottom so you can wave your hands around. So let's have a look at my finished story by tapping on my profile. So I've got the first slide, I can tap to the right to move through the story. Tap on the left to go back if you missed the first one. So tap to go through here. If I tap and hold, I can stay on that for a minute just to show you. This is where somebody's answered my question. So what I've done is I've reposted her answer onto my story, added a photo with one of those face filters and a bit of text at the top as well. And the final slide I've done, 
Um, I actually added a post from Gamely Games, which I thought was relevant. So I can tap to see their post there. So I took this from their feed. And then what I did is I just tapped underneath on the share button, the little paper plane arrow, and I tapped on add post to your story to put that into my own story. And there you have it, my finished story. As well as seeing the stories across the top of your feed, you can also go to pages and see the story highlights across the top. So you'll get lots of ideas from those too about the kind of things you can do with your stories. So I hope you have fun with stories. I will talk about them a bit more in my next video, which will be about competitions on Instagram. And I'll give you some ideas about stories in that video too. I hope you found this guide useful. I will be recording another video shortly showing you how to enter and find competitions on Instagram too. And that will include my guide to sending a regram or reposting on Instagram too. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Pop over to my blog for more tips on Instagram and good luck with your comping.